Hi, everybody. Welcome to another episode of From the Bottom Up. I have uh, two guests with me today. I'm actually going to have a few guests because there's a few things that are inspiring, but I've got Andy and Zach here. <laughs> yeah, hey, everyone. Well, you can come back to me, Nicholas. Yeah, I just wanted to introduce them and just kind of <clears throat> share with you. It's been a full week. We From the wake-up episode I have every morning, there's been the theme of no compromise and just a real opportunity to step in deeper with the idea of I need to do nothing and really to practice that on such a deep level because my life is filled with multiple choices. Like They seem very important do this or do that, and both of them seem very important, yet the only way that I can discern what is the most important is not through an external reference, like, well, what would Jesus want me to do? It doesn't really work right now. It's, it's what do I feel? And it's a really beautiful opportunity to deepen into what do I feel in every moment? What is the most important thing that will, will light up my heart? And I had a miracle with, with Andy and Zach actually yesterday uh, was it yesterday yeah yeah because part of my mission with uh, working with I'm gonna use the term lightly Millennials and you're you're actually gonna have a show go into that more tomorrow because we don't really believe in it but there are certain stereotypes and and aspects that the world judges and you guys might agree or not agree with but you know here I'm coming from this really strong initiative place of come on we can do it and passing on this initi this initiative and you and I and you two were having a beautiful talk about it the other night and at the end of the talk you know you guys said to me you and Utah said we have never had initiative our whole lives <laughs> and like a light bulb went on and the thought came to me, wow, no wonder we're together. But that's not enough for me to just feel that I'm of value in your life. <laughs> it's not funny. But it, <laughs> I've got to feel like there's some kind of an expansion, you know, in my life. And so I just put out the prayer that night, and the next day you called a meeting with Zach about the Spiribot project. And I was out shoveling the snow, and and came in and really hadn't like prepared in any way for the meeting. But you were, you were prepared. And I sat down and and just kind of watched as both of you kind of sat there and just stared at each other. <laughs> <laughs> and I normally would have something that I had no preparation to step in or arrange the meeting or organize it. And I just sat there and, and kind of just ignored the impulse to try to fix it or make you say something or something. And it was like, it would have been an awkward standstill in a normal worldly conversation. Where, you know, but I just, I let it go and I just went into this kind of mystical feeling of, oh my God, what's happening? And it's like the world was turning upside down and then... And then I did see some thoughts like, wow, this bot is never, as I imagine it, is never going to happen. AI, artificial intelligence, with living miracles, is, there's no way this is going to happen, Jesus, because it would require me to step in and make something happen right now, because look at them, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Why don't you give them the look that you had that... <laughs> Can I? <laughs> I don't know. I don't even know. <laughs> Go ahead. What? Yeah, what? So what? <laughs> Deer in headlights? Because this is what I'm feeling right now. Yeah, I can. No, I can just say that. Um, you know, around you, Jason, and a few others, like I feel like one of my core lessons is like this apathy, and um, when I'm around certain ones that don't have that, maybe the opposite, like initiative, like you and Jeffrey. There's almost like some kind of deferral in the mind that like automatically starts leaning on that person. And it's like, okay, 
they're just going to do everything. And then, and then there's a fog in my mind. And then, yeah, it just doesn't feel good. But yesterday, it was already a little bit unusual for me because before the meeting, I was writing down questions I had. I was writing down the purpose for the meeting. It's like, okay, we're going to talk about this, this, this. And I was like, hey, Zach, what do you want to talk about during the meeting? We want to get clear on this. And so that was already out of the ordinary for me because I'm practicing this initiative to wash away this apathy. But then, yeah, we started. And um, I guess I still had some kind of assumption that you're going to start off. You know, it's like, okay, I'm already starting to defer onto you. And then... I could see that you weren't going to talk anytime soon. <laughs> and, and I could see you were starting to go into this mystical state. And I, I was like, wow, actually, I really like Jason like this. This, <laughs> this, this feels really good. But at the same time, it's like uh, somewhere in my mind, I knew like I had to like say something. But it's almost like there's this fog in the way that it's like, yeah, the, ap the fog of apathy or whatever. So eventually, I finally just said something you know and then and then just kept going and and I already started to feel better because I was taking that initiative and just speaking whatever <clears throat> I had to speak and then I think Zach said something after that and then and then at some point after the ball already started rolling it's like then you got activated to say something but it was like the lesson was initiative for me and for Zach and that wasn't your lesson, so it's like we all had to like play our part perfectly in order for mm -hmm. whatever healing that needed to happen to mm -hmm. happen. Yeah, that that was the miracle for me is that because I've been wondering over these months how how do I help this turn when it seems like the only gift is to share initiative, and yet to even give initiative, it like it stops. Oh wow, it's like something's transferring in my mind even around relationships because. I would leave relationships and they would, they would maximize and end because I would feel like no matter what I did, they would never step up. And so it would be a, a relationship of eventually disjunctiveness where there would be like a superiority or a strength and a perceived weakness. And it was definitely not true, but the roles, we couldn't leave the roles. And I can see right now it's, it was always for me to just learn to step back at the right moment because this was the miracle was when I couldn't and didn't have any initiative to step in this mystical experience came over and you guys literally stepped in not because of anything I said or did but it was purely Jesus activating you or you activating your mind and it really showed me that people like there's all these judgments on different generations right or even millennials or generation X it showed me that None of that is true because it's all my mind. And if it's all my mind, then when I take my part perfectly, everyone else has to do their part. So the only problem has been I, I haven't done my part. <laughs> I haven't done my part perfectly. I haven't stepped back at the right moment or, or whatever. And so there is no such thing as people with lack of initiative. It, like it all deleted in my mind. So. Oh, wow. <laughs> Wow. Yeah, I can, I can see that because it's like Jeffrey and Susanna in my mind also have that you know self-initiative dynamic. And then recently they just went on a trip, so they just completely left the house. And then at the same time you went through a phase of stepping back. And then at the same time we're kind of going towards the spirit direction. And then I don't, I wasn't even so much involved in the spirit direction or what. Yeah, I don't even know how it all came about, but just one day I just saw a, a proposal about, like, Spirit TV, and I don't know, I just saw some kind of proposal that was sent through, and I was, and everyone, you know, shares their thoughts, and I was just looking at it, and I was like, this isn't in alignment with the original direction of how Spirit was supposed to go into. And, um, and then my apathy was trying to come in and say, like, yeah, I just go with it, you know, just yeah. just say it feels good, whatever. And then, but then I just, I just stopped at that moment and I just like had some kind of flash of me in like 10 years looking back at this moment and saying like, see, I had that thought <laughs> and this is why this is happening now. 
And then, and then you would have said, well, you didn't share the thought, you know, it's like, it's like, which has happened so many times. It's like, we have to just share the thought. So, so I was like, no, like, I'm not going to do that. So, so, and then I did something completely I would never do. I started taking a lot of initiative when that moment hit me. And the first thing I did was I started walking over to your room and, um, and then I was like, okay, I'll call him before I go over there. So I called you. I was like, can I come over to your room right now? And, and then I did. And then I shared all the thoughts with you, which was already is like some kind of initiative I wouldn't do. Um, so I shared all the thoughts with you. And you're like, I think maybe you are touching on something. Maybe you should go call these guys. And then next thing you know, I'm calling um, one of the houses in Mexico. And I'm like, get the whole house together and I have something to share. Like, I would never do that. You know, that's completely <laughs> against the apathy dynamic in my mind. So it was like a lot of initiative was happening already. And then I shared all the thoughts and it felt so good and it was amazing and inspiring. And, and everyone was so happy after that, like lit up, like Kristen was so happy and like, wow. Yeah, like, wow, I can't believe yeah. it. And yeah, it was amazing. And then ever since then, <laughs> no one even kind of told me this is my role, but it's almost like I've been taking the Spiri direction and making sure it's in alignment mm -hmm. and taking a lot of initiative around all the different aspects mm -hmm. of Spiri. And it's been so inspiring. Mm -hmm. And it's even like what I always wanted to do mm -hmm. in my life. It's like I always wanted to be like a, a CEO, so to speak. And it's like the Holy Spirit's using that symbol now. Hey, you said something about that, that because just over Thanksgiving, you were really upset because you this fantasy was coming up around wanting to be a CEO and run a company and have a nice house and cars and invite your family over. And and then at the same time, in this conversation you and Yuta and I had, you said, uh, seeing now how how apathetic I've been, there was no way I was ever going to get that fantasy. And yet here, maybe you want to fill in the blank. Yeah, and now here, all the training I'm going through is actually CEO training, like in the form of it. But the purpose is to heal the mind, but it's like, it looks like CEO training, mm -hmm. actually, everything that I'm doing. And that's how it's washing away the apathy. So it's almost like, I was thinking this morning, like, wow, I, it's been set up so amazingly, like in my mind, like I have this huge desire in this lifetime to be a CEO, and my, one of my core lessons is apathy. And you can't be a CEO with apathy. So it's like, in order to experience like my biggest desire of the world or whatever, then it's like, I have to heal my mind. <laughs> so it's like the Holy Spirit is using the symbols that I love to heal my mind. Mm -hmm. And it's like, it's like, yeah, I'm in alignment with that. You know, there's no, how can there even be like a sacrifice mm -hmm. with that? That's amazing. Like, like, wow, the, yeah, the orchestration <clears throat> of that, you know. It's like even watching Emily and Ricky today. Like the orchestration of, of both of them, you know, letting go of past relationships and having this deep relationship together to teach what they would learn and what you're going through with this and me with having this strong initiative that, and my whole lessons, I need do nothing. Like how this all gets orchestrated, is, it's amazing. It's just... Amazing, and then we had Zach, who, like, well, the meeting had started by him saying, "Well, I did update you guys five days ago." So I quickly went into base camp and looked at some messages and could tell that, oh, that should have been followed up. This, 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 and I thought, okay, how's this going to work? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, I think my lesson for that whole thing it's it's like related to what Andy is speaking about because I know like we've had. We've gone on walks where we'd like go into, we went into a store nearby and literally it's like a minute or two of figuring out what we want to like eat or want to get from the store. And it's just like that dynamic. I see, I see we have a similar dynamic in, in just like taking initiative. And for me, I think the lesson was just being okay with the emotions mm -hmm. and the the blocks in the moment that seemed to be getting in the way. Mm 
-hmm. because I did have all this judgment like, oh, I'm not, I'm not taking over, like I'm not leading, I should be, like this is a meeting about AI. I'm, Your project. This is my project, but, but there's nothing, like there's no thoughts in my mind while I have this judgment. So mm -hmm. actually the most helpful thing in that moment was just to let it all mm -hmm. up. Like I couldn't force my way through it. Mm -hmm. So yeah, it was, for me it was like, it's almost like coming to a realization that there's no, there's no other way that it could have happened. Mm. Like in order to, to get in touch with things to follow up on and helpful things to speak about, like, I need to go through this. Mm -hmm. I can't just mm -hmm. decide it's not important. And then you saw that by just expressing your thoughts, that for the past five days there were opportunities for you to feel a worthiness to just ask for a connection point with somebody. You didn't know who. You thought, was it Andy? Is it Laverne? Is it me? And that if you just ask for that connection point, that those people can help you decide if there's something to move forward on the project or not. But it's an unworthiness to, to go forward and ask yeah. for help, I guess, or something. <laughs> no, that's what it feels like. It's like, yeah, this, just this, this fog that comes in, in my mind. And it's like the temptation is to believe that the fog is there because I can't figure it out myself mm -hmm. or something. Exactly. And like I can't figure it out myself. Uh -huh. So there's the opportunity. It's like the judgment. It's like trying to build my own worthiness mm -hmm. rather than accepting the worthiness that I've been mm -hmm. given. Mm -hmm. When I accept that worthiness, mm -hmm. then like there's a willingness to actually reach out mm -hmm. and and join mm -hmm. <laughs> truly. Ask for help. Yeah. That's beautiful. And then, so Andy's, uh, Andy stepping in and talking was initiative. It was also answering your call for help and allowing me to step back. It was just like, <laughs> we all win. <laughs> yeah. Mm. So these are the nuances that I feel, yeah, I just, us living together and being together and and sharing and have the courage to practice in the moment what's authentic and what we truly feel is, is yeah, is why Jesus brings us all together in the complementary ego dynamics that can be undone. Yeah, it's really phenomenal. And you'll probably go more into that on your show tomorrow around most of the messengers and elders not being apathetic at all, <laughs> you know, and then seemingly a few that are coming in that have that dynamic and how it works. So I'm plugging your show for tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But I love what you said, and it just comes to mind, because um, there was this anger that would come up for me like over the last two years or whatever, and I never knew what was the deal with that. And then one day you just told me that this apathy in the mind comes in when when the anger comes up and it kind of just like pushes it down as a way to deal with it mm -hmm. and release it but not actually release it and then the anger is around like a desire of something that I'm not getting mm -hmm. it's like belief and sacrifice I'm sacrificing a desire and then there's anger and then there's apathy to kind of push it all down and and yeah it just feels like for me it's been like a journey of like uncovering more and more layers of this desire like I, I thought mm -hmm. it was one thing and now I uncovered something a, a deeper egoic desire underneath that which is that kind of fantasy thing that I told you about where I, I always want to be a CEO of even from a young age and then buy a big house and put all the family together and have nice cars and this and that and now it's like yeah and now it's like the Holy Spirit using that desire mm -hmm. for healing it's like it's amazing. It's almost like I can't use that desire anymore to be angry, like, because it's being used. Mm. Yeah. It's like I, I don't have, I'm starting to not have that 
victim story mm. anymore that that desire is not being used because actually like now it is mm. thank you yeah thank you yeah thank you guys this is a great topic thank for me you. it was just to mm. really see how much how together how important it is that we're together like i've always been attracted i'd use the word millennials like young good in computers you know the basics so we can do some high-tech stuff but you know, without really applying this deeper lesson of, I'll step back and let him lead the way. You know, now you guys have space to rise up and take your place. So just to be a part of that in this natural way is, is great. Thank you. Yeah, Beautiful. thank you. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> well, we're going to shift gears here. I've got two parts to this show. Is um, Jeffrey and Susanna... I've just been away with Kirsten, I don't know, maybe a week or two. Kirsten did a, uh, a writing, a journal retreat. And uh, then Jeffrey and Susanna continued on and met with their parents, or at least Jeffrey's parents. And as is often the case, whenever they would come back from these tours, I would say, what do you guys have any miracles to share? And there was always a little bit of fear, but we'd convince them to come together in the house for a few minutes and then they would share it all before they would lose the miracles. And so I thought I'd invite them onto the show today to because they came back and they were tired yesterday and didn't actually share with the house last night. So I thought we're all together now, we'll just hear fresh from them some of the miracles of their trip and just see where this conversation goes. So welcome Susanna and Jeffrey. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks for having us on the show. <laughs> <coughs> so, unless you're bursting with something, no, I've got no, no, whatever you got. Well, the most curious question to me is: you started to share with me today, Susanna, in the morning. You know, you would go away on these trips, and yeah, you would, you would feel like it was a great opportunity to be with Jeffrey and. And the relationship would strengthen, and there'd be this beautiful healing going on. And the con a conclusion would be there that, well, that's why I need to be away with Jeffrey. And it wasn't just Jeffrey; it would be previous relationships where it's the relationship, or maybe what? What's the or? What's the other? Well, the or in this case would be community, but to me, it symbolizes like God or like the calling of my heart. Oh. So it was the relationship or the calling of your heart, and you could never bring them together? Yeah, no. <laughs> <laughs> I tried, but that would never go together in my life anyway. And in this case, it actually is together, but there's still this desire for a romantic relationship, I guess, because <laughs> that's the way it comes up. Mm -hmm. so how, how, was that, how did that shift on this trip somehow? Well... I think it was there on this trip, but I actually got to see it for the first time, that that's... Oh, <laughs> that that's what was going on. Because other, on other trips, I, we would go away, and I just... Yeah, I wouldn't be looking forward to coming back, and I had all these reasons why. Like, I didn't want to do the same thing anymore. I didn't want to feel... Um, like I was busy all the time, or I don't even know what the excuses were, but there was always a thought that I couldn't have this because of the community or something. Mm -hmm. And there would be this huge shift when I would come back from a trip. It would just be, um, yeah, like the world being flipped upside down again or something. And I would always have this feeling of sacrifice, like I have to sacrifice this trip for that. And it would just take me a few days to adjust, and then I'd be totally into like, oh yeah, this is it, this yeah. is totally it. But yeah, this trip was a little different because I actually could notice those feelings come up before I even left. And then during the trip it was there as well. But then when I came home yesterday, it was a totally different experience. Like, I haven't felt anything different. Like, there has not been any shift whatsoever. Like, it's just felt like one thing. Mm. And that just feels really cool because 
like there is no either or mm. like it's like the relationship with Jeffrey and the closeness that we got um, on our trip is actually extending into being here mm. and the community is being welcomed in to my relationship <laughs> <laughs> that's what it feels like like it's not separate but like it's being united in my heart that's beautiful <laughs> <laughs> that's a miracle. Because that feeling of one or the other, oh, that's hell. Because <laughs> then when you're here, you can't be fully here because you want to be away. And then when you're away, you never, you never want to go back or maybe for others, I want to be back, you know. Yeah. Kirsten's described that in different ways with when she'd be in New Zealand with her family, she was thinking of London. <laughs> and when she's in London, she misses her family. And that's how the ego just keeps you never happy anywhere. Because I was sharing with you, too, that I just realized that even when I'm away, like, and there is the relationship and we get to be together and, like, experience the relationship or something, it's like I still wasn't fully satisfied because I, I, I had this, like, I had this thought, like, well, you know, I'm going to have to. I'll be back in a few days in community or something. Like, I'll have to go back in a few days so I can't enjoy it right now mm -hmm. because it's not going to last. Mm -hmm. So even that was just very tricky, mm -hmm. but not true. Yeah. Yeah. That's great. <laughs> even though you met Jeffrey through yeah. the community, <laughs> there's still this fear of, like, I'm going to lose, you know. Wow, that's amazing. It's really deep. It's very deep. Anything else come to your mind from the trip that it's like, wow? Well, yeah. I just feel like I come back with this renewed desire for this path. <laughs> How so? <laughs> well, yeah, I just got in touch with, like, this, yeah, what I actually want. And... <laughs> Welcome to my world. <laughs> <laughs> but just, um, I'm not sure how to say it, but just like, yeah, I, I want to, I don't want to get caught in the same trap over and over. And I feel like I have the same prayer every time I come back. But this time, <laughs> this time it feels like it's, it's, I <laughs> Like it's actually going to last or something. Like I'm not going to forget my prayer and lose it. Mm. And and I feel like the retreat with Kirsten, like that to me was like huge because the whole journaling aspect of things actually allows me to keep my prayer. Like I feel like it's this huge important thing now in my life. It's like no, I'm gonna I'm gonna stick to it. I'm gonna. That's my discipline thing Journaling. right now. I'm going to yeah. journal in the morning and at night. And What do you do? Do you just like write out your thoughts or do you hear thoughts come back? Like what's your journey? Like you? <laughs> I don't know exactly. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like mostly I'm just sharing my thoughts and handing it over and then I'm not really sure that whatever comes back is just from me or from some higher power like I'm not even sure mm. but whatever comes back does feel good so <laughs> I'm just gonna go with that <laughs> <laughs> that's a good start <laughs> and a good ending <laughs> yeah you just you practice it and you know by the fruits if it makes you happier mm. it's yeah. the right direction and that's even something we can keep continuing to do together like that's even mm. a way to join it's not in the re relationship itself, but in uniting mm -hmm. in that purpose. So Beautiful. Yeah. <laughs> Tiny miracle. <laughs> Tiny. <laughs> mm. Did you, and you did the retreat as well, did you have an Oh, experience? the retreat was amazing. We actually have a few pictures. I have a list of pictures, so I'm going to look here. Um, yeah, you can share the journal writing uh, picture first. Yes, yeah, so it was in Miami, and I had I had a pretty profound experience. Just like I had done it before when I read I Married a Mystic, and 
doing what you've been doing actually too is just like letting the thoughts out first but then just asking the specific questions or and it was like yeah during during this retreat you know actually there's always something about accountability for me like it's just like my path like if I'm asked to do it and okay now I'll do it and so being there with everyone and doing it with Kirsten and, and Jackie it was like that process of just writing the thoughts and as I wrote the first like question it was like a page and then a one-line answer and then they got smaller and smaller but hearing those responses that made me feel better and actually mm. answering questions that mm. they weren't for me some of them like would sideswipe me I'd be like I'd write all this stuff and it would be like and then the the, the thing came back like you were it was about my projection on the certain ones and judgments and all this and I'm like I want to let go of this and then it was you were never alone I'm like what the f <laughs> I'm not talking oh wait a minute <laughs> I got gotcha. you <laughs> like just trying to reach me from that uh -huh. that side, but when I'm so caught in in my perceptions, it's like it's a great practice just to let it out. And I even, yeah, we started doing it together after. And but the retreat was amazing because we have uh, you can show the picture of us all outside as well, and that other picture showed us in the the session all together. So this is a handful of the people there with Sharon and um, Monica and Linda. And Rosa, and it was funny because we all—they all came. I actually show the original one too that I, I said the journal writing picture. We all came from different. So you have Kyle and Lewis in the back, who you know, and we all came. There's me with my green on the edge. But we had this beautiful house that we rented. We were in this like little circle, and Jackie and Kirsten. You can show the uh, the Kirsten picture too. Just gave this beautiful setup of how to do it really just to uh -huh. really hand it over and it was this idea of I had never been doing what I practiced in, in form with a sponsor with you with like creating the relationship with my with God mm -hmm. by sharing everything with him not mm -hmm. just asking mm -hmm. <laughs> like the idea of no this is actually where my mind's at I hate this I don't like this and give me guidance and these <laughs> limited conditions <laughs> yeah but I'm not sharing where I'm, yeah. where I'm at like yeah. sharing where I'm at with a friend mm -hmm. you know with the appointed friend was like oh my god just unleashing all this stuff and then seeing the whole group where everyone was at like Lewis and Kyle everyone at different areas in their journey and this and after we did like two sessions yeah about two sessions Kirsten brought us we all came together we we're gonna have a movie and she's like no she was praying I think we're just coming together and kind of an altar session and we set up an altar session and everyone shared like their experience what they had and it was like this was day two and everyone had already received the answer to like why they came to this retreat like Lewis was beautiful he's like I wrote 12 pages <laughs> just like going and going and then finally there was this clarity and I heard something and he's like and he was like there it is like but he had that experience that we all come to like oh my god I get to pray like mm. prayer is an actual option mm. in my life mm. and this opened up that door for him and mm. he was just like I get to do this now mm. like I can continue to do this and then he had his kids there and he had missed the session he's like I'm gonna continue to do this and we're gonna stay connected to like we're gonna do just to yeah. to keep that going and even Kyle Kyle was like struggling with it was so funny <laughs> Lewis said this to you. I wasn't sure who to write to because we all have that question when we start it like Am I writing to Jesus or the Holy Spirit? Or and I have this this thing that I write to JC, <laughs> and my initials are JC, so it's like my Cover higher them both. <laughs> yeah, my higher self, this, my future self, whatever you want to say, it's kind of covered. <laughs> and it was so sweet. Lewis is like, I wasn't sure who to write to. I didn't want to write to uh, to Jesus because then the Holy Spirit would be mad. <laughs> so, and then, but even like with Kyle, he was like, I finally was able to write to Jesus because we all have this preconditioning of the name Jesus and all that and he was like I decided to do it and then yeah and like yeah, each person just had this amazing mm. like response to actually you know a lot of them thought they were coming there because they wanted to write a book and this was a writing retreat and really it's just about hearing the voice of God <laughs> like yeah, in yeah. whatever we do and some ones that were writing books are like oh my god this is was my answer and Seeing the way, it was a different type of retreat. We had a couple of dogs and a rabbit. <laughs> it was like, so we got to, got to experience a lot of that. And, 
but it was cool to see people from different you know yeah. area walks of life or at different points in the path and really getting the answers that they wanted it was, it was great I think I have well then you went um, you went back home and you were going to share something with me I said save it wait for the show yeah around your dad and I didn't yeah. even know you needed to meet with your dad but what was the miracle that you were going to yeah well you may as well show my dad photo <laughs> <laughs> this, this one is uh, there's my pops so look at the light the Holy Spirit's in there and uh, this was actually in New Orleans, so on the way to Miami, we stopped in New Orleans for two days and spent some time with my, uh, my parents because I hadn't seen them in so long. And then I went up for that procedure. And the first day I was there, we had one day, like Tuesday, and we had to do some things for, for some green card and get some accounts straightened out. And I went out to breakfast with my father and brother. And when this, I went out- This was in Connecticut? This or was in Connecticut, okay. yeah. And when I went out with the two of them, it was funny, like I thought that would be the, this was my idea. <laughs> Maybe I didn't pray fully on it, but it was like, oh, let me go out with them. And when I was with the two of them together, there was just too many of the, the group dynamics, the, the roles where it was, you know, talking about the Red Sox apparently won the World Series, <laughs> like all this stuff. It was like, and actually trying to get to the deeper stuff that I wanted to share. And then as soon as my father, like he was, had to go back to the office and he, threw his card out. He's like, why don't you guys stop up and pay for that? As soon as my father had left, my brother started start talking about this huge inspiration that he's had that we've touched on before. And I was like, I lit up. I'm like, what are we talking about the Red Sox for an hour? <laughs> like, this is why I wanted you. But it had to be. Yeah, yeah. Had to be the one with a... So he got to share a lot of what he wants to do, his inspirations. And, you know, he has this huge capacity and, you know, and this is where he's funneling his mind energy in. And, so then we had Thanksgiving all together, and um, it was great. It was great to be there. It was a whole mind-watching event, really, for me. But then on the Friday before we left, I asked my father to go to, to breakfast, just the two of us. And when we went together, <laughs> when we went just the two of us, it was like, it was funny because everything was so perfect. Like, <laughs> so, you know, I wanted to talk to him about, like, I'm unwinding from a lot of things, but, like, I have real estates and things and residual income and insurances and this and trust funds and all the stuff that me and Frank talk about a lot. And when I sat there and we, it was like, it was funny, the miracle that I had before I went there was he was working, you know. It was a Friday after Thanksgiving. He works like crazy. But he's also going hunting. So I said, why don't you just come by the hotel we're staying? We can have free breakfast here. And he called. He goes, yeah, I can't come over there. I got I to gotta work, and then I'm going hunting. And I was like, that thought came in. Like, he ain't got time for me. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> I'm home. And, and I just, it just passed. And I went, nope, I got to go to him. Like, this is where we're doing the best with what we believe. And like, no, he loves me. And I went, and we had breakfast. And it was like, it was amazing, you know? <laughs> But I just started talking like I would with my brother and like the practical things. I'm like, well, this is what it is. I got two houses and six cars. <laughs> I'm selling all this stuff, but I want to yeah, see where I'm at. Yeah, I want to buy new cameras for the studio. I'm like, this is where my heart is at. This is my calling. This is what I'm going to do with my life. And <laughs> I said, this is a day, two days after my vasectomy. So I'm obviously, I can speak confidently now that I'm not having kids. <laughs> <laughs> so, so it was always his thoughts were always I'm doing this for you kids and the grandkids and my brother has a few children I said whatever needs to be done for them is fine but there's certain things that are in place larger amounts of money I'm like listen and for the first time when I talked to him it wasn't he like was so open to him like dude you can never spend your money in your lifetime like what are we doing and he was just like smiling at that and like actually like letting it in and I was like so I don't know, I don't need money right now. I like, literally have my own money. I have a lot of it, but I just want to have this stuff out of my mind. Like I don't want to have to think about, is this mine or could I use it or whatever. Whatever the thoughts were that went with it, I was just like laying everything out for him. And it was just like this full support of like, yeah, that's for you. Like there was this, always this question in my mind was like answered. And it was more this idea that I'm being supported, like by my father who happens to be one of my angels you know and it was, and it's so hard because i never wanted to ask for help for him or you know i always wanted to do it on my own but now that you have this calling that you 
you're resonating and going yeah. for, you can tell him clearly what. Yeah, there's that's it. When I speak on. to him, and that from that place, there's nothing. Yeah. There's nothing there because he knows that there is a purpose. He doesn't have the thoughts of. I mean, I was an active addict for 20 years, so there was always a. You're gonna blow your money. You're throwing blown yeah, and yeah. all this stuff, but now it's like there's a full trust, and it's like, mm. whew, and that's what like really blows me away, I guess. Mm. So he's like the Holy Spirit yeah. sent in now. Yeah, that's beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> this is what happens on the from the bottom up. <laughs> it's funny because there's such a fear that if we follow our calling. Yeah. We're going to lose the ones that we love, but in your case, it's 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 in form a very perfect example actually that you follow your calling and you you know you had no relationship really with your father. Mm. It was all past right, fear in this way, yeah. And now it's like he's being sent in deeper. You know, it's great having Susanna there as a yeah. beautiful symbol. You're having connections with your brother and your inspiration and mm. and my mother as well. You can show my mother my mother picture. It was like she was less upset. <laughs> Like when we left this time, it's getting better each time. But just when we, she was more upset when we left New Orleans, <laughs> and we'd be seeing her in five days <laughs> than she was when we left Connecticut. But it was like I think it's the same thing. Like she does have this knowing. I remember writing her a note one time. Like you don't have to worry anymore. Mm. After I had my experience and in recovery mm. and everything, and now I think that's starting to happen. <laughs> like yeah. she knows that I'm with. Yeah, I'm with God. With people mm. that care. And I remember, I've had a talk with your mom and yeah. it was all about God and just making sure you were in a true path. Mm. It's, yeah, it's actually huge because the par parents, really their dream is like they want their kids to be happy and when they actually can see that happen, especially coming from where I came from where I was never happy, like it's an answer to their prayer, you know, ultimately my prayer. Never know what you're gonna get on Jason's show. Yeah, I'm going back uh, December fourth to sixth. I was praying about a visit back home and called my aunt, and she's gonna rent a, a large house in the hometown for four days. Bring my mother over. My sister's flying. Everyone's coming. So I was like, <laughs> I'm going. You know, so two days. It's all gonna be taken care of, and like lots of miracles, and then leave. I think so. mm. I'm excited for that too. It's been like probably like Kirsten, probably seven years since I've seen oh, wow. my aunt. And so, anything else come to your mind from the trip you want to share? Oh, show the Jeffrey and Susanna picture. Maybe it'll spark something. <laughs> This is at Thanksgiving. I was laying down on the couch after my, my surgery. <laughs> I don't know. It just was very nice to, to take care of Jeffrey. <laughs> the little bits that I could. I just, yeah, really love him. Mm. <laughs> it was hard. It was like I felt capable. Like they tell you not to do certain things, and she's like, "Don't lift that. Don't do this." And I saw the do where all this stuff, like the patterns, but in a scale where we're like staying it up. No, don't do that. Here, let me support you. And she's like, walking my arm, like I don't know. Oh no, maybe I do need this. <laughs> <laughs> like this refusal of support, of love, or yeah. So that was really. really cool. Yeah, it was sweet. Well, beautiful. Thank you. I got the heart of the, you. Might have a different sharing with you. Yeah, there's a lot more pictures with little miracles at the airports and things like that. We had here. Show my last picture. Yeah, this was as we got on. <laughs> this is as we got on the shuttle to go be brought back to the airport our final night. <laughs> yeah, it was great. We were carried the whole way. That's beautiful.
Hmm. Well, this is our shortest episode of From the Bottom Up, but it's probably a good thing because you, uh, you've got um, David coming up in about an hour and 20 minutes. You get a nice lunch break and, and he'll be there. And Yeah, I'm grateful. I was wondering because I didn't have much uh, myself, but yeah, it's always good to just interview. I feel like a lot of these shows now are going to be interviews because I'm so interested in mm. in hearing what what people are going through especially from the miracle perspective and yeah you, David has allowed me to do that on my own show where I just show up like, wide-eyed what is going to happen and <laughs> maybe he'll keep coming but so far the last three weeks it's been orchestrated that mm. he's not and so I'm prepared to do a lot more interviews and mm. maybe we'll call surprise guests and just hear what they have to say so thank you for Jason, Jason's also open to invites, and he can do this in your own living room to <laughs> oh, yeah. interview you. <laughs> Maybe one day I'll, I'll drive around to your house, and you can be on a remote from the bottom showing up. from the bottom. <laughs> but in the meantime, if you have any questions that you want <laughs> mm. on either the morning shows, which is 7 a.m. Monday, Wednesday, Friday, 7 a.m. Mountain Standard Time, or for From the Bottom Up, please feel free to write me a question. And if there's no pressure to respond back as a it's just between you and me. I'll probably use it as for the shows or mm. something that will bless the universe. And I don't have to use your name. Just write. Don't use my name. If you don't write, don't use your name. I will probably use your name. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, yeah. Thank you very much. And thank you. Have a great, a great week. Thank you. Thank you.